I think in 15 years, fiat will be dead. In a 10 year frame, if you have one Bitcoin, you can retire. In a 15 year frame, you have half a Bitcoin, you can retire. In a 20 year frame, if you have at least 1 million Satoshis, you can retire. They are so entrenched into stealing the national treasury through inflation, through their salaries, through their concessions, through their business deals in real estate and gold and some other assets, that they don't have time to look in the cancer that they have already within society, which is Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a cancer, Bitcoin is a virus that is going to kill everything that is broken. States will be replaced by coal and money will be ruled by Bitcoin and Citadel. If Russia had their assets, not in treasury bonds, 600 billion, but if they had it in Bitcoin, the US could have not done anything about it. Nothing. There is about 15 million Bitcoin in the hands of us. And when I mean us, the Bitcoiners, which know its value. And we have not released it yet because we believe humanity is not ready to be at peace with money that cannot be manipulated. It's going to take some time. We we have to let this clown war take the pendulum to the extreme. You as a human being want exactly the same stuff as I want. You want to be wealthy. You want to be healthy. You want to have a family. You have to have a roof over your head and you want to live in peace. But politicians don't give us that. They give us uncertainty. Um, how did you find your way in Bitcoin and how uh, do you think everyone should find the way and why should everyone find the way in, in Bitcoin? Ooh. Like, uh, like a may maybe in a starter question. I've been looking for Bitcoin since I was an early child, seeing my father, who was um, an, I, how you say, an industrialist. He owned several companies with his partners. And I remember... When the tax time came, uh, it was a very stressful time. They had to get a lot of paperwork. They had to have a lot of meetings. I mean, it was it was very stressful time. It was hard to um, share time with my father during those times because um, we owned assets, significant amount of assets at that time, and, and companies, and uh, that meant that the accountability had to be all organized. So I, since at a very early age, I found that the interaction with the state. It's quite aggressive. If you make a mistake on your tax reports, they're gonna come and search you and then make your life impossible. So I always say, why are we paying taxes? I mean, did I not just pay for that toy? Did I not just pay for that house? And we're still paying taxes on it. So I always say, is there a way to just separate state and the money that I earn so they don't bother me? And so I was always looking for Bitcoin. So with that in mind, in the back of my hand, obviously Bitcoin only appeared in 2009. I never heard about it until during a, a corporate business trip meeting in, uh, in the United States. I um, left the three days of corporate meetings, which went really like shit because I ended up being fired like three months later. And uh, I got into an early flight from Chicago to Miami. Um, around 5.30 in the morning. And because at that time, the corporate policies allow you to travel in business class, I chose my road and uh, I seen by the aisle and, and I called my father six o'clock in the morning just to let him know that I was flying back to, to my current tax farm resident, residence and then uh, that the meetings were like shit. We started talking, it was early in the morning, five till six. And suddenly somebody came to the chair. So I, I uncrossed my legs and moved back, and I had my phone in between the two chairs, and you had the window. So the guy, the person was going to come in, he came in, and he hung up my phone. And then he turned around and sit, and then he said to me, have you heard about Bitcoin? And dude, it's, it's 5.58 in the morning. I, I turned around and I said to that person, uh, I was talking to my father, and he said again, with a crazy eyes, rounded, crazy eyes with big, uh, how you say, um, when, when you don't sleep, how do you call that? I have the blue eyes. I don't know how to call it. I'm yeah, only not native English, but the blue eyes. Much, they get this type of blue or dark, dark you know what I mean. Okay. So I, I, I said again to myself, um, I, I didn't say anything. I just thought, what the fuck? I got a five, five, five hour and a half flight with a fellow that I don't know. He just sit down to hang up my phone and he's asking me about Bitcoin. 
And then I, I, I thought to myself, what the fuck is going on? And then he said again for the third time with bigger eyes and crazier eyes. And he said to me, have you heard about Bitcoin? And I said to myself, fuck, I got five hours and a half. I'm not going to argue with this guy. I'm sitting here. I want to sit here. So I said to, my, I said to him, uh, no, tell me. So he said, give me your phone and I'll download an application. I'll give you some. I'll show you how it works. And I said to myself, no, crap, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what type of application he wants to download and then he will be tracking me or whatever. So I was being quite paranoid. So I said to him, no, no, just tell me and I'll take a note. So I pulled out my notepad and I, I started. And we spoke to him five, hour, five and a half hours on the whole flight about Bitcoin. And he's telling me all this stuff and where to get it and who to speak with and what it does and how is it so powerful and protected. So I said to him, but during our conversation, I said, but how do you know so much about it? And he said, well, I, I'm just coming back from Switzerland. And of course, I, make in, I made a stop in, in New York uh, on both ends for meetings with the private banking sector explaining Bitcoin. And I said, okay. And then, so what do you do? No, now I'm flying to Buenos Aires. I was going to another city in Latin America also. That's why we were both together in the same flight to Miami. Um, but, uh, but that's pretty much what I do. I said, okay, fine, that's good. Very pleased to meet you. We say goodbye to each other. And I started walking down the aisle to my, to my gate for the connection. And of course he went away to his connection in Buenos Aires. So I check him out. He gave me the addresses. I check him out and I was, during five, five, five hours and a half on a personal conference, and I would, I would call a brutal induction to the Bitcoin rabbit hole by Mr. Andreas Antonopoulos. And, and under that process, I said, I check him out. I mean, he got oh, 250,000 followers at that time in Twitter. I said, what the heck I spoke with? And I started investigating Bitcoin from that day on. Uh, Within seven days, I started purchasing Bitcoin. Uh, I would say about $320 average. And I uh, continue buying Bitcoin until I got to the point where I say, okay, I got enough here. I want to try the shit coins because we all do shit coins at the beginning. I, and I chose about seven shit coins. I bought about the same quantity I had with Bitcoin. And then I started regressively with the same process I did with Bitcoin, but Bitcoin, I bought it from the beginning and then studied it, uh, looking for holes. And the other shit coins, I started looking for holes. And the shit coins, I, I found the holes half an hour, five minutes. I mean, they were stupid companies selling the ideal of what Bitcoin can provide on the terms and conditions that were not, not, even, not even viable, but completely irrelevant and with a big gaps in regards of uh, privacy or big gaps in regards of reliability. So I, I, I sell, sold them back and then again bought the Bitcoin data back. So I got back to my stack and I kept on studying it obsessively. I remember by the end of 2016, I was with a whole bunch of family members and I just set them around and said, I got to tell you about something. And I was just completely immersed on the topic completely immersed and by that time i gave each about i don't know hundred dollars worth of bitcoin and nowadays none of them still have them i knew they were going to throw it away they were going to forget it they were not going to pay attention i know they none of them had it because they didn't go through that process as i did i mean this was probably the most violent process of a bitcoin rabbit hole induction that a, a human being can have um that was, that was my entry to, to the Bitcoin rabbit hole. So I got pushed down to the bottom of the rabbit hole from the day one. And I've been exploring other alternatives and other things uh, to, through my history. But sadly, Andreas turned around and started investigating uh, shit coins and doing things that, of course, were not nice for the rest of us. So he, he kind of distanced himself from the community. And slowly he's getting back. But uh, yeah, you can prove that the road through the shit con rabbit hole is always a bad one. Always a bad one. Why do you think so many people falling for the, I, I call it shit coin trap? 
Ah, oh, it's a simple thing. Is is let me. I'm going to switch this and. and Thank you. So the question was, why so many people going to the shitcoin rabbit hole? Yeah, yeah, like why are so many falling for the for the shitcoin trap? Yeah, and like I said, it's easy. It's easy. It's, it, you need bias. Uh, a bitcoin is worth sixty some thousand US cock bucks, and um, a shitcoin will be less than a dollar. And people want to to experience the same process of going through these bull runs on a shitcoin. They just don't know they last half an hour, or in Bitcoin they last years. So that's why I think they people tend to go into shitcoin. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 fascinating to see all all those people going into the shit coins and going to the Alcon rod, and it's like, ah, uh, yeah. But 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 I feel like it it's it's part of your Bitcoin learning journey. Like uh, if if you don't uh, experience with altcoins, uh, you probably don't know. But like you have to go down that road. You start with Bitcoin, you go down the Alcon route, and then you go back to the Bitcoin. And it's be. like the, this 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 learning curve. Um, it's an interesting, it's really interesting orange pilling story. Uh, being orange pill by uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, I, I love it a lot. Um, d did you also go ahead and then uh, orange pill people that that aggressively? Uh, yes, yes. In, in fact, I I am specialized. I mean, in the accounting department of the Bitcoin Corporation, we do training, specific training for the personnel to be able to efficiently orange pill people. In fact, I. I have some notes here in regards of how to uh, fastly orange peel human beings. So we can we can also touch that topic because it's, it's something that people do, I don't know, juggle with it and sometimes it's very hard. And when in reality orange peeling somebody is quite easy. How do you do it? Like, uh, what, what, what's your process? Um, first question I do when, when I'm orange peeling somebody is I ask them, What do they think about inflation? And this is like logic programming. So when people say inflation, no, I don't understand inflation, you explain them inflation. But when people then tell you that they hate inflation because the cost of living has just skyrocketed, then you can work with that person a lot faster than the one that doesn't know inflation. But here of the two, when you explain them inflation, then obviously they realize they've been taxed Not once, not twice, but three, four, five times. And with that in mind, you do realize that there is a need to solve this problem of inflation and hidden taxes and taxes without representation. But keep Bitcoin automatically, when you explain them that the structure of finance systems that we're living through nowadays, people realize it's got to be something different. And when you say, okay, something different, then the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, let's go for gold. But gold is a shit coin because transporting gold is a pain in the butt. Additionally, transporting gold requires that if you do it in large amounts, your risk is very high if it's not officially registered. And instead, if it's officially registered, you still run a lot of risk. So it's a capture asset. I, I, we did, I, let's say my, a group of investors that I work with, we did have gold. And what a significant amount of gold. And eventually, when a situation happened within one of these tax farms that I mentioned to you, I reside in, uh, there was a directly, direct state attack on us. When this happened, we realized the value of gold is minimal. It's just a shiny freaking rock. It is that, I mean, it's got some value for industrial applications, but in reality, there is no benefit other than jewelry and some industrial applications. Some. So it's highly overrated. On top of that, if you look at gold, gold it has a ridiculous tax on the environment. If these people that work with Greenpeace and with Greta and everybody that is so involved in the environment uh, concern, if they were smart, they would go directly against mineral mining, especially for luxury goods in the case of gold. Because my... My uh, personal profession involves me into physical mining. I do supply equipment to the largest mining producers in the, in the world through my, my entities. And to do that, I do choose my customers clearly. I don't like uh, miners that work in, in the jungle. 
but I don't like miners that work in areas where there's a lot of environmental effects. So I work with miners that work in the desert, that work in isolated areas, that there is no significant environmental effect by these mining operations. So, so going back to the point of, of orange peeling, instead of turning, showing the people the exit and the solution, show people the problem. They will look for the solution. They will ask you for the solution, and if you know it, then you explain it in Bitcoin. It's a protocol, it's decentralized. Uh, one thing that is important to mention, Robin, is that cryptocurrencies do exist since a long time ago. In fact, if you've been doing your banking through the internet, you've probably been doing cryptocurrency, centralized cryptocurrency fiat for the past 30, 25 years. So once you explain that to, to a, a person who doesn't know about Bitcoin, you go, okay, I know I have cryptocurrency in my own bank. What other kinds of cryptocurrency are? Well, there are crypto, non-regulated cryptocurrencies, which are these shit coins, these altcoins, coins, non-regulated. And then, of course, unregulatable cryptocurrencies, which is our exit, our Bitcoin. Uh, oh. Sorry, I had problems with my microphone. <laughs> I also like it that uh, once you once some because most people don't understand that we have a problem. Uh, like a lot of people, I still speak and they're like, "Yeah, inflation. A little bit inflation is good for the uh, economy. It, it's not that bad." And I'm like, "Inflation is theft. Like they're they're stealing purchasing power from you. Like why are you saying we need that? For, why do we need theft for the economy?" <laughs> It's not, it's not required. It's absolutely not required. And once you realize, they say you make some savings, you make some savings, and you say, okay, I want, I want to work more with this money. I, I made it already. You start going into fixed return assets, and you realize it's just, it's just a scam because the state will take 15, 20, 30% of that profit. They didn't do anything. And then you start, I mean, if people don't realize they're being robbed every day, it's, they're just too, not too stupid to, to be able to understand Bitcoin. And as I said a few days ago, and as I said on a frequent basis, Bitcoin is not for the stupid, nor for the lazy. Why, why do you, you said, just said that you also mine Bitcoin in different areas? Uh, why did you go in, in mining Bitcoin? Also, are you... um, I, well, I, I do work on both mining events. Eventually, initially, I worked with, with uh, physical Bitcoin mining. I was the first uh, miner and the first node using only solar energy in 2016. I mean, I embedded myself into the Bitcoin network as deep as possible from the get-go. So one month later, I was already uh, ordering my, my S9 L3 miner and, and start doing the testing. And from then on, I went into, I moved into the Atacama Desert and I lived there for two years. And I acquired the mining equipment. And I, I like I said, I had a node, I had a, a Bitcoin mining over there. And I was focused on using solar energy at that time. So I took those two years, which were very educative for me and very profitable to me, I have to say. Even though I didn't spend any money, I invested my money properly into Bitcoin and separated state from my money. I love it a lot. You, you also bro brought up uh, taxes uh, before we, uh, when, when, you uh, in, when you started uh, uh, and, um, explaining Bitcoin. Um, and we know that inflation is kind of a tax that's always there. Uh, and this is a tax that definitely does not make sense. It steals from people without uh, representation. Um, do you think that taxes in general uh, make, make sense? Or is it like we should, we should cut taxes and we should only pay for actual services? Is like a service-based uh, government better? I'm going to go further in time, but I'm going to choose a phrase to tell you about it because this is specifically directed to it. And um, if you bear with me, because I really did take some notes here to share with you through, the, through today, I would say that uh, the Bitcoin rabbit hole allows you to travel in time, close future and further future into time. And by doing that, you gain inner peace. That inner peace allows Bitcoiners to have a clear set of mind, of principles, of goals, 
and of course the relation with the service providers. I do believe that it, within 10 years, we will start seeing certain states that are collapsing through their corrupt infrastructure being replaced by code. The, the, I mean, within Bitcoin, we can talk about past, present, and future. And if you, if you talk about past with Bitcoin, you have to remember that we used to have religion, the state, and money together. And while I was very early on my age, I was born in a tax farm that has been always at war. I mean, always. There, there was always some news about somebody, somebody putting a bomb and blowing up a bridge and killing some people and then putting on a car bomb elsewhere, so on and so forth. And uh, there were always these religious leaders that would get involved within the terrorists and the state to make these peace agreements, which ended up just being in a messed up down the road with another attack and another killing of, of people who had absolutely nothing to do with it. So in the past, we had the state, religion, and money together. And then we separated religion and the state, but the peace was false. So the problem for peace was not religion and state, who in the past did help for a lot of wars. But now we come to the point where, okay, the solution for peace is not the state with, with religion together and with money. We took away religion, now we got the state and money. And when you separate state and money, that's the last leg that trumbles a state intervention in your life. Because now the only way the state to charge me is either through the assets that I own within the tax farm or with the services that I purchase directly. But I tell you that individuals that know about Bitcoin nowadays in countries that are non-democratic are very aware of the efficiency of Bitcoin. You see, your, your point of view of Bitcoin depends on which tax farm you are in. In your current tax farm, the presence of the state would probably say that you got close to 20% of, of BAT tax, and you got about close to 30% of, uh, let's say, assets and rental declaration per year. So you're looking at 50% taxing, but you are on top of that inflation, and now we're looking about 60, 65, 70% taxation. How could we accept that? If we don't have a tool, we have to swallow the blue pill. But if we have a tool, we can swallow the orange pill. And the more you study Bitcoin, the more you realize that it has less holes. You see, on a Tuesday, Tuesday 11 a.m. meetings with the CEO of the Bitcoin Corporation, Mr. Nakamoto, is quite clear. There will be no more than 20 million 999, 999.9967 Bitcoin. No more. And we're not changing that shit. And when you, you learn that you can use that tool without anything other than you investing your time in learning, so you cannot be lazy. And you investing your time in learning, so you have to become smart, implies that you gain freedom. That's the cost of freedom. States will be replaced by code, and money will be ruled by Bitcoin and citadels, which is another topic I want to bring to you to the table. You remember an older tweet that I have pinned to my, to my uh, Twitter profile, and it says that citadels will be run in Nakamoto's. For you to, to own a citadel, you at least will need to have one Bitcoin. Within the citadel, that Bitcoin will be spread to be paying for services, but not in Satoshi's, in Nakamoto's, a hundred million of a hundred million of a Bitcoin. And with that in mind, that node that could be redistributed through that citadel will protect that no other money enters within that citadel. So this will be closed nodes that will interact between the lightning level three. Uh, let's say, nodes that are within its network. 
That's how we will be living probably 25, 30 years. Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21 Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistic. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order, plus you support my channel. And now, now, let's get back to the video. Your pin tweet also says that uh, this is not a neg negotiation, uh, or at least I think I saw it in, in, in your, your your Twitter profile, uh, which I also like a lot because I always say like, we, we should orange pill, we should be, should uh, put the people that we love in, in the direction of, of, of Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, it, if Bitcoin is actually sound money, we don't need to do that. Like Bitcoin will, will take care of uh, of its own. Is it already written in stone that Bitcoin is, is successful and that the, those uh, paths that we are now splitting up the uh, money and state that we will actually do that? Rowan, in, in engineering, after certain proficiency of execution, and a good level of education, and I, I'm not going to say I'm probably the smartest person, but I know, do know a lot of smart people. I realized that in engineering, the highest level of an, of an engineer is an integrator. Satoshi Nakamoto is an integrator. He took mature technologies, evolved technologies, confirmed within over decades, and he integrated in a different set of places to make Bitcoin the protocol and the network and the currency and everything function together. For you to attack a technology, you have a minimum of a maximum of three years. And Bitcoin, even though by 2013 had only three years with monetary value, Bitcoin already had four years of existence. So the attacks, the 51% attack, the denial of service attack, the uh, code gap that they found on this bug for the 21 million Bitcoin that were issued in one block, so on and so forth, that was too late. The state was too late. So no, there's no way to kill Bitcoin now. And if, if they kill Bitcoin, we're going to come with something else that is equally decentralized, that is it's basically a photocopy of Bitcoin, just that the Bitcoin protocol that these guys... Um, allow us to grow uh, was working on a double 202 and, and a double SHA 256 hash. Well, this one would be on a triple or will be on a 512 SHA uh, encryption mode. So it, it would be impossible. We already found the exit. Is either this exit or a bigger one, which is more encrypted and more safe, so on and so forth. But nowadays, if you look at the Bitcoin network on itself, we are over 200 times the highest hash level we were doing during the biggest attacks on Bitcoin from 2013 to 2018. Those were probably the five ugliest years for Bitcoin. And still we're breathing because Bitcoin is designed to be attacked. So when it was attacked early on, on, on within the, the, the early years, that's when shit coins came out. So if you, if you touch certain animals, they will spit on you or they will uh, throw you darts or things like that. Well, Bitcoin is like that because it's a virus. It's a monetary virus. And to be more precise, Bitcoin in reality, if you're a religious human being, is the second coming of Jesus. Because the first time God sent his son, we fucking butchered him. And now he said, fuck, I'm not going to do the same. They're going to kill him again. But, but then... He realized that we had broken money, that the money that was not broken or semi not broken was still captured. And we have to wait for the initiation of the internet to become digital to now truly be free.
I can cross an airport anywhere in the world nowadays with over a hundred times what is the minimum or the maximum that you can cross officially, and they can do nothing about it. Nothing. Because I got it here. If your money is in your head, your money is all over the world. All over the world. So it's already there. It's not that you brought some money into the country. No, the money is already here. And that's, that's checkmate. And the beauty about it is that the incentives are aligned for enemies. Whoever you are in the world is in your best interest to have your money not being manipulable by anyone. In the specific case of Bitcoin, if Russia had their assets, not in treasury bonds, 600 billion, but if they had it in Bitcoin, the U.S. could have not done anything about it. Nothing. But now the U.S. is going to take those $600 billion in treasuries and give it to Ukraine through giving it to the, the industrial military complex because they're not giving it to Ukraine. They are sending it, they're taking their part, and then bringing it back to the military industrial complex. So it's checkmate. It's just a matter of time. And it's Will a matter you, uh, of... Go ahead. No, uh, it was interesting for me when you said uh, Bitcoin is the second coming of Jesus. Um, and there's a lot of this this new concept of the time chain, uh, which also thought, you know, like, w will we at some point have the time where, like, before Bitcoin, before Satoshi and after Satoshi, will will Bitcoin be that significant uh, in the long run? But it's oh, a different no topic. Doubt. If you... No doubt, Robin, no doubt. Because taking account of this, you were not able to have an asset that had value unless you hide it properly. If you were very rich, you had large quantities, which implies that you will have to have great security to hold these assets. As an example, the drug dealers in the past, and I'll give you a, a specific name, uh, this psychopath, crazy, loco, Escobar, He had so much freaking money, I, th I believe over six, $9 billion dollars at the time, he was within the 10th uh, wealthiest man on earth, that his money that was packed on what we call caletas, which is high in places all over many parts of the cities and in his farms and in his different real estate, he used to get funguses. Because he had so much money, he couldn't move it. They had to lock it in different places and he got... It got mold, it got fungus, so a lot of that money just deteriorated. Because, yeah, it was not paying any taxes, it was away from the state, but it was so much. But in the case of Bitcoin, you can have so much and it still be as safe as so little. So it's, it's, I mean, it's checkmate for the state. It is certainly a big turn in humanity because now we have no way of doubting that the debt has been settled. Everybody I've done business with Bitcoin through my time in Bitcoin, I don't owe them anything and they don't owe me anything. It's settled. That's beautiful. A new, a new, a, a new world, a new order that we, we kind of created. How does this, uh, when we are not depending on the government, when the government and money is, is kind of free and we don't have this bond between money and government and uh, we, we are separated that, how, do, how does a world look like? Uh, when we have this, like, how, how do you see uh, society and the world uh, changing or is it not changing too much? On my first month of, of being involved with Bitcoin Twitter, with RDE, with Greg, with uh, Marcus, with a whole bunch of people, with Yellow, I, I was giving gladly the seal of Bitcoin maximalist. And I, although I did accept it and I took it from some friends who sent it to me because they took your profile picture and they did put Bitcoin Maximalist around it. I realized that I could not um, share it and express it because I cannot be a Bitcoin Maximalist if I am already a Bitcoin Realist. You see, there is about 15 million Bitcoin in the hands of us. And when I mean us, the Bitcoiners which know its value. And we have not released it yet because we believe humanity is not ready to be at peace with money that cannot be manipulated. It's going to take some time. We, we have to let this clown world take the pendulum to the extreme, which is what we are 
for we, we have been for the past three years, three, five years. We are in the hands of satanic pedophiles, narco traffickers, murderers, you name it, terrorists. You, the worst of humankind nowadays is in the top places of political influence in the world. And behind them, people with larger power are connected to them. So we got, you have to let the tree die and let the seed that you put underneath to break through the roots. And that's what we're doing with Bitcoin. We're ranting about it. We are explaining why everything else is a shit coin. But we are also patient because it gives us the opportunity to stack more sats, cheap sats. And you gotta, you gotta learn the opportunity you have in life. The, your generation and my generations and the generations in between and the ones far ahead, we do have a light for the future. There is a probability to be in peace, to have countries not fighting on a constant basis from some physical frontiers that is just nothing. When you're flying on a helicopter in a frontier or a plane, you don't see the borders. I mean, there's some different uh, exceptions like in Mexico with this wall in the United States, but for the rest, there is none. There's natural boundaries, but in reality, there, there's no difference between one tax farm and the other. You as a human being want exactly the same stuff as I want. You want, you want to be wealthy, you want to be healthy, you want to have a family, you have to have a roof over your head, and you want to live in peace. But politicians don't give us that. They give us uncertainty. They give us surprising news that this guy just screwed up and we found him. And when they put him on television, they say, no, I've done nothing. You got no idea what this other person did. And they're in the shoulder of pointing each other fingers while the people are confused, not realizing there is a circus. That while we keep on thinking about politics and we keep on thinking about our borders and our security and so on and so forth, these fuckers are pretty stealing from us. If you had $100,000 at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, you will have the capacity to acquire what $90,000 could buy at the beginning of the year because there was a 10% inflation. The United States, and I've lived there probably a third of my life, if not more, and on top of that, the, the, there being the fact that they were the world reserve currency, gave them the ability of not needing to feel like such a high inflation. So if you were working for a, a multinational corporation and you got a 3 to 5% raise, man, you were doing good. Because inflation was 1.5%, 2% every year. But now suddenly the United States got a taste of what inflation is, where all over the countries of the world, especially the countries that are not so influential financially, nor politically, nor military, we do feel the 10, 50, 20 percent inflation. So we were used to being robbed, but we didn't have any tool to defend ourselves. What's the future going to be? The future is going to be that states are going to be run. At least the law is going to be run by code. And then on general terms, if the code is run well, then punishments will be assigned. And certain crimes will have to go to jury. But the basic operation of a city or the basic operation of a citadel will be run through code, computers, AI. The, the rest, people will be still be providing services. In fact, people nowadays can make money with Bitcoin. They just don't know it. They just need to approach their customer and say, do you want to pay him whatever? Or do you want to pay Bitcoin? If you pay Bitcoin, I don't charge you BAT. And they say, okay, fine, paying Bitcoin. So you got a 20% discount in everything that you purchase. Who's going to know? They got no way of knowing. And that's a problem for the state because anybody you speak with, they hate paying taxes. The United States started a civil a, a war for the 2% tax on tea. 2%, 2 or 3, something like that. It's ridiculous. But nowadays they pay over 40 or 50% in taxes and it's fine because they stupidize them, keep them ignorant, make them only think about their country and they make war all over the world, spreading their, their petrodollar. 
And I cannot speak bad about the dollar because I earn income through the services that I provide in dollars and in euros. But it's still, they are a shit coin. Because we know by the end of the year, the inflation is going to go over 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30, 200%, like in some other countries. So if somebody, oh, there is not enough adoption of Bitcoin in the world, bullshit. There is a lot of adoption of Bitcoin in the world. It's just that people don't realize they can start earning Bitcoin by just saying, pay me in Bitcoin. Do you have a... So you, do, you think that fiat completely will, will, will die off at some point? Do you have like a, a time frame for that? 20 years maximum. But I think in less, I think in 15 years, fiat will be dead. We will have a ramp up appreciation of the US dollar for the probably next five years. That would be good for Bitcoiners in the United States. And that would be great for Bitcoiners all over the world. All over the world. Because the US dollar is going to get expensive. Then, within less than two years, BRICS is going to accept Bitcoin. Because they're already mining Bitcoin. They just not put it in a front because it's not in their advantage. I'm sure China has more Bitcoin than the United States. They just don't declare it. And if the United States has so much Bitcoin nowadays, if you have 217, why would you sell just 4,000 Bitcoin? They are toying with us. And if you believe anything a politician tells you about Bitcoin, it's bullshit. But they want your vote. And we love to hear that, oh, I'm going to make uh, this uh, Bitcoin country only bullshit. They want to tax you because they need to be paid. And for them to be paid, the state has to be paid. And if it's not paid, they're going to steal from you through inflation because they got to be paid. I mean, I don't hate the state. I just don't like it when it steals from me. What's your, what's your favorite state? Uh, is it El Salvador? <laughs> oh, you mean country where tax farm? Um, no, I'm not a big fan of, of, of tax farms. I, I like people. I don't, I don't, I avoid asking somebody uh, where he's from to, to avoid taking a perception of their personality. Uh, but you can tell from the accent and you can tell from the, their behavior where they're from. But to me, the person is more important than, than the, the tax farm they are registered in. Yeah, I, I like that. And it is, it, it's good also. Um, you said something, I don't know if you said it before recording or after we started recording, you said you come in Bitcoin and your brain explodes. It goes in so many <laughs> different directions. Like, what, you do. Uh, it's how, like how? smoking weed. If your brain is properly, if your brain, here's the key about weed. If your brain is properly wired, when you smoke weed, you will feel like all the lights in your house have been turned on to maximum. And you can go into any room and find things and do things. And if you are, you have good energy and, and if you are educated, smart, you will become extremely creative. But if your brain is not fully connected, when you smoke weed, you get lazy and you go dumb. That's the reality of it, based on the experience that I had. So we... Uh, as humans, when we started study Bitcoin, we realized that we don't learn anything about it in the school about money. They don't tell you how to have a bank account. They don't take you tell you about a, a mortgage. They don't. They don't teach you anything about money. And in general terms, in most of the families, when you bring the topic about money in the table, people say, "Oh, that's unpolite." So, getting into Bitcoin means you have to learn a new language. And the language is a language to transfer value. That's, Andreas told me that. He said, it's, it's a language to transfer value between two entities, two parts. And when you learn everything that is around it, how you protect it, how it is unmutable, you fall in love with it because you truthfully settle with people. You settle your debts and you pay them for your services. I, I try to huddle as much as possible but because I'm a human being. I like toys. So obviously I have spent some money on toys. Uh, but it's very refreshing because you know that the person that received the Bitcoin is happy as hell that they, paid, that, that they got paid on it because they know it's money that nobody can touch. So most of the people that buy Bitcoin, they leave it for their retirement 15, 20 years ahead. And in fact, the longer you are in Bitcoin, the more money you make in Bitcoin. 
And when I make money is in Bitcoin terms. What do you think is, um, well, you talked before about that 15 years to, uh, that the uh, fiat will die off. What, what do you see as like those, those milestones, those events that has to happen? I feel like a hype inflation, like the, the consolidation to the US dollars. We see it already now, like the US dollar is in, in like how many countries, 60, 70 countries already. Uh, and this will happen more and more and more. Um, how do, how do you see the, that transition time from now till, till fiat actually dies off? That's a topic I frequently discuss with my father, who gladly is alive or 80 years old and he's a Bitcoin. It took me two years to orange peel him because I didn't know how to orange peel. So he helped me, let's say, improve my methodology. But the interesting part of this transition between, Bitcoin, between fiat into Bitcoin is pain. Sadly, it's pain. So we will see hyperinflation, specifically in weaker production countries or in countries that only sell raw materials. There you will see hyperinflation, but also you will see it in the US because now they realize they can steal from our North American friends and they don't do shit. They are not doing shit. The only thing they are choosing is between the orange president or between the, I don't know how to classify Biden because I believe he's probably He's been probably one of the worst presidents of that country. I mean, he's done everything wrong, specifically because he's done nothing. Other people do it and he just approves it. Um, the transition is going to be painful. But uh, in the same proportion, that pain will be replaced by our wealth. And we will be extremely rich at that time. And like I said, if you own a Bitcoin by that time, you will be able to run your city today. 20,000, 30,000 people working for the environment that you created. So we go back to, to situations like what we, at least I always dreamed of, is to be able to retire and not worry about anything. Wake up, eating breakfast, and I'm free for the rest of the day. That's what I want to get to. It's going to take five more years, seven years, and I'm done. And I'm still... I'm going to be starting Bitcoin because it helps you grow. And I realized, for example, in the case of my father, that uh, about three, five years ago, mentally, he was slowing down his proficiency and his ability to share experiences, so on and so forth. But when we started talking, starting Bitcoin, he just snapped out of it. And he's as, as clear as a, a, a 40, 50-year-old person when he's expressing himself. So it's a way to keep your mind new and healthy by educating yourself about the hardest money. Do you have a framework? Because you said like uh, breakfast and then nothing free from the day. Do you have a framework where you're like, that's how many Bitcoin you need to retire? I mean, obviously it depends on, on what kind of a life you want to live after retirement. But uh, do you have a framework for that? Like how many Bitcoins you yeah, aim for? Is it that the one Bitcoin? Let's say in a 10 year frame, if you have one Bitcoin, you can retire. In a 15 year frame, you have half a Bitcoin, you can retire. In a 20 year frame, if you have at least 1 million Satoshis, you can retire. And, and if by 20, 25 years, 20, by 25, 30 years, if you have a Bitcoin, you can, you can have a seat to there. So people who don't have money there, who have no way of uh, purchasing Satoshis or Nakamoto's at the time, they will be able to work for Nakamoto's. And by the time they acquire 100 million Nakamoto's, they have one Satoshi. And after they acquire, I don't know, a million Satoshis, then they are, I wouldn't say free, but they'll be able to move into our citadels and then be able to get their big concern over there for them to stay in that place and earn more Satoshis and then become a Bitcoiner, a full Bitcoiner, to have their own citadel. People don't realize the magnitude of the chain, of the change that we're living through, especially when you got into the Bitcoin train, because people continue looking backwards. People continue looking back to the fiat system. And that's one of the worst things you can do in your life. If you break up an emotional relationship and you keep looking at it, at what you had, what you did, what you didn't like, what, 
whatever, you still live it on it. But when you when you realize that you're in a different path, just turn around and look in the direction that you want. I stopped looking at at the national TV for for let's say for uh, news 30 years ago when I started my career. And then I realized that I'm a much healthier person. So turn away from the enemy's messaging. Turn away from the enemy's money. Turn away from the enemy's traps or that, that rat race and realize that now we have money, we can tell them to fuck off. I love it a lot, that episode already. It's, uh, it's really, really cool to talk with you. Um, the, on that note, for for consuming uh, news, I also right now I'm I'm basically only consuming through X, uh, and and that's basically it, like X, and then for long format I go to to YouTube um, to consume some stuff, um, and I don't know I don't even know when I last time turned on the television for news. I never I don't maybe like 10 years or five years, I have, I have really no clue. And I'm really young, I'm 25. So <laughs> yes. uh, I've lived in this world now uh, with, with X. Um, what, what is your vision for like a Bitcoin Citadel? Is the, you, you mentioned that a lot, like is, is Bitcoin Citadel the, the, the future of like how we, we organize in, 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 in a society or like how do you see those citadels? Yes, yes, it is. It is the reason... It is the reason why I believe we have hope, because the states are completely unfunctional. I'm going to give you an example. One of the, the tax farms that I uh, spend my time in, it's run by narco traffickers, pedophiles, uh, drug dealers, terrorists, murderers. Those are the ones who write the rules in this tax farm. So obviously, I don't want to pay them taxes. I just want to pay them whatever they say I have to pay them, and that's it. Because the rest is in the digital realm. realm. They are so entrenched into stealing the national treasury through inflation, through their salaries, through their concessions, through their business deals in real estate and gold and some other assets, that they don't have time to look in the cancer that they have already within society, which is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a cancer. Bitcoin is a virus that is going to kill everything that is broken. And it's killing it. My maid or whoever supplies me services nowadays, after eight years of dealing with me, they all know that I can get them Bitcoin. And I teach them about Bitcoin. And some of them have started requesting me to pay them in Bitcoin. Citadels will go through that path. Because then by the time we have so much chaos within government, they'll be so compressed between their own fight, arguing about who's more corrupt or who has stolen more than the other. Small communities will start providing security, food, and services for themselves. We have the technology nowadays to be completely independent from society. Other than, of course, getting an internet supplier, uh, you can get your own electricity through either solar or other media of providing energy. You can get your water by different processes. So it's just a matter of organizing within communities and that will not happen until Bitcoin is above certain fiat value. What is that fiat value? Huh. You're only asking for the best, correct? You just want the best answers on it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, based on the side codes, I mean, you know, we are, it is 58,000 forever, okay? But the 58,000 forever, like I said earlier, comes from the 21,000 gang and comes from the 15,000 gang and comes from the 9,000 gang and from the 2,000 gang. So all this history about gangs in Bitcoin is because there are cycles that have been identified by the people who has involved in it and study how price correlates. We have cycles on our pricing and what's coming next in the within this Next 12 months is going to be brutal. And by going through this process, many people are going to go nuts. Some of them are going to get desperate and sell their Bitcoin to get more fiat and then realize they messed it up. But the stabilization value of Bitcoin will be around uh, uh, an, order, an order of magnitude from 58K. And it will stabilize there. 
So we have approximately one more half in to start the development of citadels. So within five years, we will start seeing um, small citadels being formed in isolated areas of, of the world, where the state, as you know, geopolitically, a state has the ability to exert their strength. That means they have power over the land. But there are obviously certain areas of the, plant, of the planet that are difficult to access for the state and are very expensive. That is where the first citadels will happen. Um, we have about 10 years of a lot of shit coming up our way. And I don't mean we Bitcoiners, but hu humanity. And the issue is that human nowadays, humans are divided into two groups. We have a war between human beings and humans. And a human is a greedy motherfucker. Selfish will do anything to get ahead. What a human being will realize that his wealth depends on the wealth of his environment, the wealth of the people that is around him. So Bitcoin is the money for human beings and is the money for AI. And this, those, these two kinds of civilizations, AI, which is evolving slowly, but it's already here, and human beings will isolate themselves from humans. Amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's really cool to talk with you. You have a, a amazing uh, views and it's like, uh, I, I could go on with my questions, but we're already at the one hour mark and, uh, I have a few more questions before we come to the end routines. Um, but the, the one, the two things that uh, I asked myself, uh, when, when I saw your account, when I saw your ex account also, First of all, like, like where is the accountant, the, the, the name coming from? I know there's also a, a movie. Is it like, is it some, some, something related to that? That is the accountant. That is what will come to you at the end of your life and ask you what you've done with it. So it's the place where you have to say the truth. And I've been, I've gone through ex extreme experiences in my life. I've been extremely close to death. I had uh, intense against my life, probably three. I also been uh, shot. I've been stabbed. I've been in a, I, I've been in more accidents than I have years of a life of being alive. And gladly God has a mission for me. I don't know what, but he has a mission for me. So I'm, I'm here and I'm hundred percent functional. Uh, But I realized that the beauty in death is that you cannot cheat. And, and I found that death in Bitcoin are quite, quite close because you cannot cheat in Bitcoin and you cannot cheat in death. That will take you when it wants you and Bitcoin will take the, plan, the planet when it wants. It's a digital artificial animal that is pulsing every 10 minutes, no matter what. And in this path that you just got in and that many other Bitcoiners are starting and some of us that keep on rowing on this boat, realize that this is the path to be better. So I'm, I'm accounting myself to myself. I'm accounting myself to my family, to my friends, to my friends, GM, that we need to help each other. We help each other by following the truth. So... Uh, the Bitcoin Corporation is a very large organization. You might not be aware, but you're part of it. Uh, and even though it's, though it's not an official entity, all Bitcoiners are part of it. The friends, the enemies, the ones that call you scammer, the ones that call you whatever, because you come up with an idea. It doesn't matter. They are all part of it. So this global community that has... If I believe correct, we have over 100 million soldiers. We cannot be defeated. The, the quality of human beings that are in Bitcoin is just amazing. I, I, had, I, I had the opportunity to, to sit with some in person and to, to share with some others some spaces and some meetings. And it's just something that is unfathomable how somebody else can be so bright and so smart and still be in consensus with you, which allows you to believe that you can grow and learn more from that people. Uh, so memes are the tool 
to talk to ourselves. And without memes, we go nowhere. That's that's our weapon. So, Robin, I I just think that you just gotta give it time. Let the shed settle. Let all these corrupt politicians just screw themselves because they're being guided by devilish intentions, by by completely deformed intents in reality. And the way to defend, to defend ourselves is obviously through the study and the understanding of Bitcoin because it's already, the ground is already laid. You just got to walk it. It's... Uh... It's very fascinating, your, your answers. <laughs> I, love, I love it a lot. Um, but before we come to end routine, I have one last question to, to your Twitter account. Um, you write a lot or almost everything in uppercase. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> why is that? <laughs> because you see my, my small caps bottom broke and, and I don't have budget for it. Like we didn't have budget for the, for the halving party. I told the guys at the meat factory, don't do it. We don't have budget for it. They went ahead and did it. They overdid it. They spent all that money on it. They could have stacked more sacks. And, and we are on a tight budget, Robin. We only have 21 million Bitcoin, no more. So I'm not going to spend a couple of bucks in the small key bottom. I'm just going to leave it like that and keep it on, on large cups. Oh, great. Perfect. Then our end routine has two questions. The first question is always the same question to every guest. And the last, uh, and the last question is coming from the previous guest. Um, first question, what are you passionate about besides Bitcoin? What is your passion, uh, the, that is not related to Bitcoin? Not related to Bitcoin. Fuck everything is related to Bitcoin, man. Everything is related to Bitcoin. Health is related to Bitcoin because that's where you confirm that you're doing things right. Um, hobbies are related to Bitcoin because whether or not, if you want to grow in your hobby, you, that money cannot go to, to Bitcoin. So it's got to be something worth it. And education is related to Bitcoin because no matter what, if you come to the truth, you come to something related to Bitcoin. But now that you ask me, um, I'm a, my hobbies are, I like exercising my body. I like to keep it in shape. And I love motorcycles. So those are the two things that I try to to do other than than working on my business and and working in Bitcoin. Working in Bitcoin is really fulfilling. I, I, I love it too. Um, the last question uh, is coming from the previous guest. Uh, my, my Andrew Dean is always, uh, the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Um, and the question for you is, If you could sit down with any one podcaster to chat about Bitcoin or anything else, who would it be? Is that it? Okay. Uh, if, I guess I would see with, with Satoshi Nakamoto if he was a podcaster. That, But to interview that him, would be, that would to, be awesome. not to talk, because, I mean, the guy, the guy is, is not just a genius. The guy just shows us the path. And without the path, we got nowhere to go. I mean, I was, I was in a right race in life just trying to to get ahead of it, and I always found that somebody was stealing from me one way or another. And Satoshi just just opened the door for us to walk away from that fiat theft. Yeah. I got some some things I'd like to share with you, I guess, if we have the time. No, yeah, definitely. Uh, of course. Okay, good, good, good. Um, first of all, uh, uh, previously to the last bull run, um, we in Bitcoin Twitter, which now is called X, but I mean, whatever, whichever number they put it, it is the front line to deal with normies. That's why I have not gone to Norst because it's only Bitcoiners there. So I, I need to speak with normies. I need to crash with normies to let them know what's happening. Um, but we gotta, we gotta take the wings and I like to count the wings for Bitcoin. We fucked up the new, new world order. We really fucked up the new world order. Also, Bitcoin is always under attack. Don't be surprised whatever is happening in Bitcoin. Oh, it's been attacked, whatever. Dude, buy more sats. Buy more sats. No matter what happens, there will be an opportunity with Bitcoin ahead. Mm. Bitcoin is the black hole of value. We all heard that. And it's important to keep it in mind because if you have some assets and you really want to save, the only option is to choose Bitcoin. And... I cannot predict what the Fed's going to do, but I can predict what Bitcoin is going to do. 
And right now we are about 1.57% inflation through this year. And next year is going to be 058 So it's going to be a great opportunity for all of us if we stack properly. And last but not least, during that bull run, the discussion was you got to be building. You got to be building. You got to do something for the community. So during that process, me as an integrator, I believe that the best thing I could do is to work on a wallet. And we have within our group, we have a coder and we have obviously critics and we have friends and frenemies. So this Bitcoin wallet that the Bitcoin Corporation will be putting out, I don't know how soon because it's a lengthy process. We have to go also through the beta process to do the testing, will have certain characteristics that I believe you would like a lot and probably many Bitcoiners. So I'm going to read some of them. Obviously, open source code. So everybody who can read code can read it. Uh, it will uh, allow you to choose the asset you want to present your savings in. Satoshis, Bitcoin, or Nakamoto's. Obviously, the portion of the Nakamoto's will be necessary within 10 years, but it will be already in operation. Also, the, the Bitcoin wallet would allow you to use the four highways that we currently have in Bitcoin. Legacy, Segway, Taproot, and Lightning. Um, the Bitcoin wallet will allow you to choose the amount of words that you choose for your, your mnemonic seed. So it will go from 12 to 36. You can do 18, 24, 36. I mean, you choose how encrypted you want your wallet. Uh, additionally, it will be adding a, a modules of services for rentals. So, for example, if you're traveling, you can rent a place where you're going to be traveling and paying in Bitcoin. Down the road, we expect to have the ability to have assets on the wallet, but it's quite ambitious, so it's going to take some time. But those probably would be are the major uh, factors of the wallet of the Bitcoin Corporation that will have no economical benefit, neither to me or anyone on the organization, but for the community. Um, with that in mind, my friend, I guess that if you have any other question, I have to come up with a question for the next guest. Definitely. I usually do it offline, but you can definitely already do it now. Yes, I believe the, the question to the next guest is, what is your Bitcoin goal? And I don't mean in regards of uh, the number of Bitcoin you want to acquire or stack or Satoshi. You know. What is your goal with Bitcoin? Let's say you get whatever you want in Bitcoin. What do you want to do with it? That's something that we all must have in mind because you're stacking for the stacking. No, it has no it has no benefit for the future of the of that family. Because if you keep on stacking, 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 you will never be able to realize a standard of living that will be good for you. And you might die in the way. You might have a car accident, a motorcycle accident, a health issue. And oh yeah, you were able to accumulate two Bitcoin, but you died. So make sure you, you put a goal for the stack that you want to have. Once you reach it, change your style of living. And then if you can stack more, fine, but you got your goal. Because if you don't do that, you're going to be always running for more and you will never get there. That's a beautiful end. Uh, you Use your Bitcoin, don't stack till, till you die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do yeah. it. There's some people quite obsessed with it. Uh, I, I believe we have one life, so might as well use, just enjoy it. And also have some, some toys. <laughs> and have some toys, of course. Have Definitely. Some. Interesting uh, enough, on those toys, which I invested close to three Bitcoin, they are all nowadays worth more than that because, I mean, it was a good purchase. So I think they have, they have not given me pleasure and, and allowed me to enjoy what, the things that I like, but at the same time, they have kept their value. So don't be afraid if you are stacking and then suddenly you have a big desire of something, give a gift to yourself. It's, not, it's nothing wrong with that. I love it. Perfect. Then uh, before I let you go, AC, uh, where can people find you? Where can people uh, reach out to you? Um, I'm in, in the front line with the normies. So uh, you can find me at uh, CDCM99 in Twitter or X, whatever you want it. 
and that's it perfect then thank you for being on and uh thank you for everyone watching and listening uh for being here i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye I, i made a note you owe me two thousand satoshis you say amazing twice <laughs> Two thousand satoshis. I'll send you the address. All right. <laughs> Thank you.